So let's jump right into the first topic for SPSS, which is exploring data. And the general rule I'm gonna to recommend to you is whenever you have a data file, you always wanna just look at your data before analyzing it. And I don't just mean staring at the spreadsheet. What I mean is looking at some descriptive statistics before we test any real hypotheses. And so today what we'll talk about is how do I look at things like means, frequencies, histograms, whisker plots, and correlations for different data types. We're gonna use a specific data set. It's the one that we started with last time, which is the auto online data set. So Auto Online is a website where car shoppers can find information about cars and individuals can purchase the car right on the website. And the data we actually have are survey data from website visitors. All of these visitors ended up buying a car, some from the website Auto Online and some just from regular dealers. So those folks went to the website but didn't buy through the website. There's 1400 respondents in all and the data set hopefully you have open already is autoonline.sav. Let's go right ahead and look at things like means. So to look at the mean or the average, it's pretty simple. We go to the analyze menu, which is pretty much where everything is. We go compare means and we say means. This opens up a new dialog, which lets us select whichever means we want. And what this also lets us do is look at means as a function of certain things. So let's say we wanted to look at something like how often people purchase through the internet, which is the variable how oft, as a function of gender, meaning do men perhaps buy more online than women. So in our dependent list, we're gonna put how often. This is the area where we put what means we want information on. In our independent list, this is basically the categorization, we're gonna put gender. So if we just click into this box and start typing, I'm typing G E N it automatically jumps over to gender. So we put that in our independent list and that's it, we hit okay. Automatically, this is gonna open up the statistics viewer and you're gonna see a few things. One is you're gonna see information about cases. So it tells us that we have 100% of information. If there were any missing cases, it would show up here. And down here is the most important part. It tells us that for males, the average response to this question was 2.97 whereas the average response for females was 2.22. It also tells us that there were 1,100 men, 270 or so women. And one thing we might wanna also say is, well, I don't remember what 2.97 means. So conveniently, we can jump right back to our data editor, look at variable view. If we go over to how often and we click the values, it tells us that one means never, two means almost never, three means occasionally, four means often, and five means very often. So that means that these folks that are a three purchase occasionally, whereas these folks that are about a two almost never purchase on the internet. So that's the first thing we could look at, just means. And by the way, if we simply go to means and we put in other variables, whatever we might want, we can simultaneously look at the means for a bunch of different variables as a function of men and women. So I just put in a few variables randomly and you can play with this. So maybe take a second right now and see if you can do the same thing in SPSS. Something else we might be interested in is looking at frequencies. So instead of means, we just want the counts of different distributions. So again, we go to our analyze menu, and this time we go to descriptive statistics, frequencies. And note that the window is a little bit simpler. And in particular, I wanna look at two variables. I wanna look at the variable friend, F-R-I-E-N-D, as well as billboard. And so I simply hit okay. And what we see in our output is the frequency of responses to each of these questions. And also, because we have the label already in place, it tells us what the question is. So how many people found out about auto online from a friend? 1,319 said no, which is 94%, and 81 said yes, or about 6%. How about found out about auto online from a billboard? 96% said no, 3% said yes. And so this gives us the ability to figure out frequencies. Again, why don't you try and do the same thing and see if you come up with the same answer? The next thing we might wanna do is look at things like histograms and whisker plots. And we're gonna use what I think is one of my favorite tools for exploring data, which is the explore tool. So under analyze, descriptive statistics, explore, what you wanna do is put in the variables of interest in the dependent list. And that's all we're gonna look at for the moment. And let's just take a look at one variable. Let's look at age. So again, I'm gonna start typing age and it pops in. I'm gonna put that in the dependent list. By default, we don't get all the plots that we want. So what I need to do is click on this plots button 
another menu pops up and we do get the stem and leaf plots by default, but not the histogram. So we're gonna just check histogram. Then we're gonna check continue and then we're gonna hit okay. What explore does is it gives us a lot of information. It gives us things like mean, confidence interval for the mean, median values, standard deviations, so on and so forth. We also get this nice histogram, which tells me the distribution of responses. And so I can see, for instance, that the data are a little bit skewed, but also truncated at a certain age. And it looks like we don't get a lot of people who are younger than that buying cars. Makes sense. We can skip the stem and leaf plot as I don't find it particularly useful. And we come down here to the whisker plot. Now the way to read a whisker plot is as follows. The middle dark line represents the median value of the variable that we're looking at. The bottom of the box is the bottom quartile. The top of the box is the top quartile. And the two ends are the youngest and oldest values that don't include outliers. Now outliers are defined in SPSS as anything that is more than three standard deviations from the mean. So these four values are all considered statistical outliers, meaning they're all much older than we would expect in a normal distribution. And what's nice about SPSS is it tells us the number associated with each person. So this says that the 934th case in our data set is a statistical outlier. The 937th data point is also a statistical outlier. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is correlations. So correlations are our ability to see the association between two variables. So the degree of relationship between any two variables. Now correlations range from a value of negative one to one where one suggests a perfect positive correlation and negative one suggests a perfect negative correlation. So if you observe a negative value, that doesn't mean that things are uncorrelated. That simply means they're negatively correlated. As one value increases, the other value decreases. And the way we do this is we go to analyze, correlate, and we're gonna use what are known as bivariate correlation. So let's say we wanted to find out if there's a relationship between how often people shop online, the variable how oft, and how helpful they found the website. What we would do is we take the variable how oft, we would put that into our variable set, and then we find the variable helpful. So I'm just gonna type H-E-L, there it goes, and that's it, and then we'll hit okay. And what we see here is what's known as a correlation matrix. It's a very simple one because we only have two variables. And the way to read it is just to go across the rows and down the columns. And so what we find, first of all, the relationship between a variable and itself is always one. So this diagonal is always one. And what we really wanna look at is this area here or this area here. It's the same thing, this is just symmetrical. So what this tells us is that there's a relationship between how often do you make purchase through the internet and the variable I found the website was very helpful in my purchase, such that the value of the correlation is 0.06. And it is in fact statistically significant because right below it, we have what's the p-value. And we say that if the p-value is generally less than 0.05, we consider that a statistically meaningful relationship. In this case, the relationship is somewhat small. It's only 0.06 but yet it is still positive and significant, meaning the more someone shops online, the more they found a relationship to be useful. So let's try and answer these two questions one at a time. First of all, do people who purchase more from the internet think that buying items online is safer? So we go to analyze, correlate, bivariate. If you still have these old variables, you might wanna hit reset and we put in how oft and safe web and we hit okay. Well, what we find is that the correlation is 0.978, which is very, very high, it's almost one, and it is incredibly significant. It's so small that SPSS can't even output the value. It's 0. 0.000. So what that tells us is that people who purchase more from the internet tend to think that buying online is safer, which makes perfect sense. So let's look at the other question, analyze, correlate bivariate. Instead of safe web, we're gonna look at hassle. And then we hit okay. And here we find that no, there is no relationship. People who purchase more from the internet do not find salesmen to be more of a hassle. Despite that number being negative 0.033, it is not statistically significant because that value is above 0.05. Exploring your data is incredibly important. Minimally, it gets you familiar with the data structure that you have. But more than that, it lets you see things like if there are outliers or if there's weird correlations that you wouldn't have expected. 
it lets you understand if the data that you're using actually have some validity to it. So whenever you get a new data set, I implore you to take a moment to explore the data before you actually jump into any meaningful data analysis.